Um, wow, thank you to the worship team. That was awesome. Uh, Courtney, I didn't even notice your boots until you got on stage. I love those boots. <laughs> And uh, even though they're not here, I want to start by thanking Pastor Katie and Levi for inviting me to preach. It's always an honor just to be here, and I love getting to be a part of what God is doing in Desert Stream Church, and also just getting to see everybody. And for those who don't know much about me other than my name, like Debbie said, I help run a ministry called Passport Missions. We train and take teams on short-term mission trips to other countries. And we recently came back from a trip in June. I got the privilege to go to El Salvador on a scouting trip for the very first time with Justin, Anakin, and our friend Dave and his niece Naomi. The ship was blessed from the start. Unexpectedly, we had finances given to us as well as someone offering to buy all of our tickets for us, which is crazy. I have shared before that I have what I call my own want list, where I give my wants to God for specific things, for example, and reason. Uh, when we go to India, the first flight, is 17 hours just for the first flight. So I ask God for good airlines because it's important to me to arrive ready to go. I don't just ask God like, gimme, gimme, gimme. But we've had times where I think our second trip we went and almost all of the team got food poisoning and it wasn't from India, it was from the airline. But I brought this request to God and time and time again, he's answered. And a quick question, how many of you know Justin? If you do. <laughs> then you know he's a faith guy. He's only had people get him a ticket when he didn't even have money and trusted God to provide. I shared with the youth how there were times that Justin told me we probably wouldn't get a good airline for the year. And I said, why are you even speaking like that? See, I've heard his stories. I've been mentored by him. So I know what God can do. I've seen the possible. I even told God it would be awesome to one day fly business class. So when this person told me, you're flying business class to El Salvador. I couldn't help but get excited. And the side note is, don't be afraid to ask specifics for yourself. Too many times we only pray for others, which is not a bad thing, but it's like they say on a plane, put your oxygen mask on before you help others. Share your wants and need with God. Let him pour out on you so you can pour out on others. That trip, we got the opportunity to connect and build relationships, and through a miracle itself, we got to visit a boys and girls orphanage, and we even got to prophesy and speak life over a home for teenage mothers. It really just was an awesome time. We also got the privilege to preach and minister at a local church while we were there, and Justin got to share and had given a word about trouble, someone having trouble breathing. A lady at that church had the issue but didn't come up till after service and she shared that she previously had COVID and ever since was not able to take a full breath without having difficulty. I asked to pray for her, she said yes, and afterwards she started to cry because she could finally breathe without issue and God had healed her. What was even more exciting, the pastor we were there with, uh, Theo, had said not too long before that he hadn't seen a healing in over 20 years. We continued to pray and prophesy over people that night. Theo also said when we first got there that he didn't really move in the prophetic. Well, by the end of the trip, he was getting words and felt inspired by our stories. He even invited us back to do a healing service, which was really cool. But um, before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and pray. You don't have to bow your heads, close your eyes. Just honestly do whatever feels comfortable, but I'm going to go ahead and pray. Um, God, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for your presence that's already here. And God, I know that we say it a lot, but just come and do whatever you want to do. I thank you that we get to come here and worship, have fellowship with each other, and just give you glory and honor. God, I just pray that this message this morning would be something that encourages and inspires. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you, have you ever left a birthday gift unopened? Of course not. You rip it open to see what you got. You show everyone, and you talk about what you received even when it socks. With anticipation, you consider how you will use the gift. The chance to share a testimony is also a gift, a blessing from God. God gives us the gift of a testimony so we can share our story. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, tell your story. In case you didn't figure it out yet, the title of my message this morning is Tell Your Story. I'm going to go ahead and open into 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 through 3. If you don't have your Bibles, I think you could follow along on the screen. But I'm going to go ahead and read. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 through 3 says, 
The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. The power of a story is important to all believers because lives change when people talk about Jesus. Ministries excel in educating people through Bible sermons, and, but how many Bible studies or three-print sermons did Jesus lead? Jesus always spoke in parables because there's real power in storytelling, which don't get me wrong, sermons are needed and they do help us. But your story is something that will inspire and change those around you. Amen. That scripture talks about how your lives are a letter that everyone can read. And for many of you, you are the only Jesus people will ever meet, so your story matters. In Psalm chapter 96, verse 3, it says, Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things that he does. In other words, your story needs to be told. Telling your story is so important because there are people who need to hear it. You never know if they're going through something similar or maybe they just need to hear that you have a God who does miraculous things. Right. When I was younger, I didn't even know that people were going out and praying for others to be healed and they were being healed. I didn't know that this was something that was possible, let alone for someone like me, until I started listening to some YouTube videos my parents were putting on by Robbie Dawkins, David Hogan, Heidi Baker, and even Todd White. And if you know who any of these people are, you know that they're not only missionaries, but people who have many, many amazing testimonies. Hearing their stories inspired me because before I didn't really recognize at that time, we have a God who wants to move in and through us, walk and talk with us. Looking back at that time and age that I was, it was crazy that that was something I was so inspired, excited, and wanting to do. If you knew me then, you know I was dealing with a pretty bad case of social anxiety. I'm talking really bad. Even talking to other kids at the youth group was a very difficult thing for me. Then one day, eventually, I was invited on a Wednesday night by Justin that he and Robin were hosting to go out and do these things called treasure hunts. And no, it's not the ones that kids go and do. In other words, if you don't know what treasure hunts are, it's when you get in a group and ask God for some basic things of who he wants you to go and pray for. You could get clues like places, just descriptions of people, or even prayer needs. And afterwards, you write down all of your clues, put them together, and head off to the mall to go pray for strangers. I was very, very nervous, but also excited because this is what I was looking for, a way to go and get my own stories. And by this time, I had been on a couple treasure hunts. I had seen God heal somebody's back in the mall, like just this dude from a kiosk, as well as many moments of, God, of people just feeling God's presence. I'd already been telling my stories to my friends, and one of them, Ellie, said she wanted to come on a treasure hunt. So we're not going to deny her. We said that she could. But Ellie said that God doesn't speak to her. So she didn't think she'd get any clues. We encouraged her that it was simple. Write down the first few things that come to mind. And we're going to put all of them together, go off to the mall. We get to the mall, and we start looking. One of the clues was, was a location, which was Macy's. And Ellie, the girl who doesn't hear from God, had written down a description of an older gentleman and what he was wearing. Imagine to her surprise when we see a man fitting this exact description at the counter in Macy's. We had a dilemma though. He was checking out and we didn't know which way he would go afterwards. We didn't want to bombard him. And then we noticed another clue that was written down said flower shirt. And funny enough, that just back to the right was a men's flower shirt on a mannequin, so we went and we waited by it. The man ended up walking exactly to where we were. We struck up a conversation, showed him how he met our description in all of our clues. We also showed him how we wrote down ankle pain and knee pain, to which he responded he had both. He said his ankles had been hurting every day and were at a 9 out of 10 with pain. We prayed for him, and he started getting excited because his pain was gone. We prayed for his knees and shared how Jesus loved him as he began to tear up. I love this story because it came out of me sharing my story about what God was doing and ended with Ellie being excited that she too heard God. She encountered him and got her own stories to tell. Right. And to mention the most important, this gentleman encountered God that day. I can't even, even imagine the lives changed as he shares his story of encountering God at the mall in Macy's. 
Turn to the people around you and tell them, share your story. In Psalm chapter 145, verse 4, it says, Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. Uh, before I continue on, I had a word to share for somebody. There was somebody else I wanted to give a word to as well, but um, sorry to put you on the spot, Andrew. I wrote this on notes because I was afraid my hand would be too sweaty to unlock my phone. But I kept getting for you that there is more. His love is never ending for you. And I got the scripture in Laminations 3.22, and it says, His faithful love never ends. His mercies never cease. And there was somebody else that I wanted to pray for. I'm sorry, Debbie, I'm about to go off stage. Um, Paul, I asked you how your back was doing, because last time I saw you, we got to pray for your back, and you made the comment that it's probably going to be something that never leaves you. And after sharing that story earlier, it's time to change that. It is. So I just want to pray over you real quick, if that's okay. God, I just thank you for Paul. God, I thank you that you love him. And God, I thank you you're the God of healing. And God, we just pray right now, and we thank you for restoration to this back, that it's not going to be something that's a forever thing, that it's going to be something that comes into restoration and just healing. God, I pray that you would just pour out your love on him. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> In the same way I shared with you guys about how treasure hunts and how they work, I had taken some time to write down quote clues before going with Justin, Anakin, Hannah, and even Joshua to youth camp Justin was guest speaking at last month. And honestly, I still get nervous. I was a little nervous. I knew I would be expected to pray over some of the youth during ministry time, so I'd wanted to ask God for words to share. And among the list of words I had written in my journal, I felt God tell me to add red shoes. So I could only think to look for someone wearing red shoes that night. We get there, we have dinner, worship. Then Justin begins his message. And coincidentally, coincidentally, out of all of the kids, a girl sits in the chair in front of me wearing red Lightning McQueen Crocs. And I look around at all of the kids sitting in chairs around us, and not one of them is wearing red shoes except for the girl in front of me. I have Joshua and Hannah to testify for proof. And I began to ask God what to pray for her. I kept getting words about peace and comfort. And of course, if you know Justin, during his sermon, he begins to prophesy over this girl. He gave a word for her about that she was dealing with anxiety and that God would bring her comfort. And I was laughing to myself because I became witness to what God was doing right before me. Afterwards, I got to share this with her and give her words as well. And this is one of the many stories that took place that night because I was willing to push past my nervousness and my own insecurities and believe that God can and will use anyone who gives God their yes. If you don't have a story, share someone else's. I want to share another testimony from us going down to minister at Rosemead, and this is not my story, but Justin's. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to preach at their youth group, and after my sermon, Justin gave one of the kids a prophetic word. He kept getting that this boy's parents were not a part of his life anymore. He asked the kid if this was correct. The boy says yes. Justin then felt to tell him he was not supposed to even be alive and that God had saved him. The kid started crying, and he opened up that he, and shared that he had tried to commit suicide six months ago, but the safety was on, and his grandmother walked in on him. After this, thankfully, he was able to get the help that he needed, but Justin continued to hug on him that night and speak life about God, healing him of the hurt that he held on to from losing his parents in his life. And fast forward to the other month, we see this young man on the worship team, Justin didn't recognize him right away, but he went up to him and hugged him, told him that he was set apart for a time such as this, and prophesied about his calling and that God had been healing him. The young man looked at Justin and said, you prophesied over me a year ago and I'm finally healed and let go of the anger I had from losing my parents. He said that living with his grandmother was the best thing and he realized if he still had his parents, he would not be in a good place. It was amazing that a year later, God had done so much in his life and is continuing to do so. 
I love this story because it shows what a word can do in someone's life as well as how God can bring restoration and healing. Although this is not my own story, it's a story worth telling. Maybe one day you'll share this story or even your own and it will transform somebody else's life. Another story that isn't mine, but it's worth sharing from a friend of mine, RK. RK had been preparing a message to go share, but was very sick at the time. He asked God what to preach on and God told him to preach on healing. RK said, how can I preach on healing when I'm not even healed myself? He heard God ask, do you ever sin, RK? He replied, yes, of course. God then said, are you going to stop sharing about how perfect I am because you aren't? So he ended up preaching on healing. He learned that even if he's not healed, he still needs to share about a God who does heal. And in fact, for the last 20 years, he's prayed for many people with shoulder pain and has seen them get healed, even though he himself had shoulder pain for those 20 years. And to finish his story, God ended up healing him of his own shoulder pain. I'm going to read Psalm chapter 107, verse 2, and it says, Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Throughout the New Testament, you could see many times where Jesus was in a house with no room in it or how they would have to have a boat ready because they'd be crushed by the size of the crowd. This was because word spread about Jesus. People were sharing the stories. We need to make it habit, spreading the word about Jesus and what he's doing in our own lives. Most of you know I started going to India on trips at 16 years old, and I've been four times. I'm getting ready for my fifth. And I love India. It's my second home at this point. And one of the many things I really enjoy about India is getting to spend time with Pastor Daniel and Joyce, who run the ministry there. And I love to listen to Pastor Daniel's stories because they always inspire and challenge us. One of his stories is about how he wanted to go to YWAM, which is Youth with a Mission, which is a missionary program. But because he didn't speak English, he wasn't able to go. They gave him grace, so they gave him a couple months to learn. What do you think Pastor Daniel did? Do you think he gave up? Do you think he forgot about his calling? Do you think he whined and complained? No. He spent time with God. He spent time with God in prayer and fasting, asking God to give him English. He committed to 40 days. And on day 39, he started speaking English. And when we're out there doing ministry, Pastor Daniel speaks English better than most people. This testimony has challenged me and even others personally. Rather than letting the impossible stand in the way, we got inspired and we gave him our focus day to day. Another story I have is from a while ago. We're out ministering with a couple people, even in our area, over in Newhall, and an older gentleman we noticed had a knee brace on. We walked up to him asked if we could pray for his knee. He said yes, so we laid hands on his knee, began to declare healing, and after praying, asked how he felt, said he was feeling better. Left it at that. The next week, we're in the same area again. We met a younger man. He just so happened to ask if we were the ones who prayed for his dad's knee. He shared with us how he said his dad got prayed for and his knee was better, but the young man said he didn't believe it until he saw his dad run across the street when he normally had to help him across because of the limp he used to have. We then got to pray and speak life over the son as well because of his dad sharing his story of getting healed. Listen, there's power in telling your story. When you stop telling your stories, you lose your strength. The Israelites forgot to tell the stories of God parting the Red Sea, of God providing manna, of God raining down quail. They stopped telling the stories of God covering them with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night as they were escaping the enemy. They forgot who God was because they stopped telling the story. So when they saw giants, they got scared. Make sure you tell your stories. Do not forget them. I know that this is a very simple message, but it's a powerful message when you put it into practice. I've had numerous times where I'm stressed, I'm anxious, or I'm facing something in life. And when I go over my stories, it reminds me of God's faithfulness. It helps me to overcome whatever I'm facing. I want to leave you with these scriptures and challenge. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says, They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. In other words, there's power in Jesus and in telling our stories. Get at least three stories of what God has done in your life or someone else's you know. They don't even need to be so-called big testimonies. 
Something as simple as a headache being healed is worth sharing. Something as simple as I encounter God during worship or I encounter God reading my Bible, it's worth it. It's worth it. God is moving in our lives every day, and we just need to pay attention. You write them down. You memorize them. You begin to talk about them. These stories can help you remember how great God is, can help you to overcome the issues before you. These stories can help others, inspire them, connect them to Jesus. I would also like to encourage you to start journaling if you don't already. Write down how your week went, even when it was horrible. Try to find at least one thing God did. Sometimes we miss what God is doing because we simply aren't paying attention. Write down your wants for the year and your prayers so you can track them as God answers. I've had so many times where I forget my own stories. But I go back to my journal and I just get hit with his goodness all over again because I see the times that he answered. I see the times that he's moved. Even when it's in the ways that I didn't expect. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. There is power in your words. So tell your story because it brings life. Don't downplay yourself. This sermon this morning has come out of what God has been speaking to me quite literally the past few months. I've been listening to the stories and testimonies from those around me, and I begin to cry. I cannot help it. Because I love hearing the stories and recognizing how good of a God we have and get to have relationship with. The stories we share don't only serve as a reminder of his goodness, but for how much he cares for us. There's no coincidences when he decides to move. I'm going to go ahead and call up the worship team at this time, please. And as we get ready to close on worship, the front obviously is open for anyone who needs prayer. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you're dealing with something. Maybe you're nervous about telling your own story and want the confidence to. It's okay. I ask God for confidence every day. Maybe you just want to come up here and worship. Maybe you want to come up here and pray for somebody else or give a word for the first time. This is where your stories start, by stepping out and letting God move.